Arena 4D, Point Cloud's most used features. So here you can see that I've actually selected my first Point Cloud. It's loaded here. You could have a whole list of Point Clouds here. And you can turn them off and on, clicking on the tick box. You can use the Shift key and Control key, as per like Windows File Explorer, to turn relevant ones off and on. You can right click here and select Properties, or select the Point Cloud and click the Properties icon. And in here you will see various options. When you have your point cloud, always remember that you double click to select the point of rotation. That also is the point where the mouse wheel will scroll you in and out. So just remember always to double click just to make life much more simpler to navigate. At the top of the screen you have the colouring can. So it's a paint pot, click it. Uh, turns amber, forces point clouds to be displayed in colour. Must have colour information in that point cloud. Again with intensity. Uh, turns blue, must have intensity values. And the grey means in the properties for that particular point cloud. At the bottom, this can scroll up and down, use a mouse wheel. Um, you can specify uh, colour or intensity. So this will force, well it doesn't force, it just respects that there. So this says colour. It will be in colour. Um, to the left here we have some super sampling options. So if you hover the mouse, hot tips tells you super sampling times one, that's the default. If I up that to times two, uh, you can see it sharpens up the point cloud because we are super sampling that to a higher resolution inside this window and much more dynamic. And also on this laptop here, this is uh, performing very well as well. The topmost one is four times and as you can see the point cloud um, looks so, even better again. It, it really does make a difference um, but you can see there is a, a frame rate hit because that's very GPU intensive so some of you people with very good uh, seriously good performing GPUs um, so your graphics cards can probably run this um, but generally one down from the top yields great results, but also with a fantastic frame rate, which hopefully you can see here. Also, you'll see that point clouds have a point size. So default is two. You can type this in here, but keys one to five on the keyboard actually do represent, and you can see that changing. Um, so if your point cloud is, you know, very high quality, um, as in very solid scan, you can run a lower number, makes it look even sharper. Um, if your point cloud was scanned and it's a bit sparse, uh, low resolution scan, it's just up in this value will make it look a bit more solid, um, which you know aids the performance and usability of the point cloud. The top here though, we have this filling option. So it's this bar here, so highlights, it's filling. You can see that that is actually making the point cloud look more solid as well. So it's a feature we use to render the point clouds in better quality. Um, so just play with this on and just play with the point size values and the super sampling to get one results for speed that you may require and quality of point cloud displayed. Um, the point ratio default is 5, generally would never need changing, but with filling enable, that ratio can be changed, so it affects the ratio of the filling. Um, with this turned off, this value doesn't make any difference. So again, with this turned on, you may just tweak this. Generally, we find 5 is something that you wouldn't need to change. Quality, so this is the quality basically affecting the number of points loaded for this display point cloud. Um, you can have a value between one and 200. So if I type in 200, just do that, type 200, press return. Um, you can see the point cloud, you may not be able to see it, but the point cloud now for, in my eyes here, is even higher quality. Uh, it is looking very stunning. There is a GPU hit to that. So performance of movement, I can see it's slower. Now, most instances that's absolutely fine um, but for this video I want this point cloud to be moving around very smoothly so I'm just going to back that down to 100 uh, 
Point Cloud still looks fantastic and it's very quick. Uh, just to show you if I typed in five there, uh, the Point Cloud's now very sparse. Obviously that would run on a machine with no GPU, um, but uh, that would be a very old machine. So just putting that back to 100. Uh, fantastic performance and fantastic visuals. Scale, scale was an option if you converted, this is a VPC, so you've used the VPC creator to obtain uh, this point cloud. Uh, there is an option in there under settings to change what the source units are. Most people would have scanned in meters, so if you're in meters, that's fine. If you've accidentally changed that and it's wrong, and this point cloud's come in, and you perform a measurement, and this is now like, two meters you've obviously got the conversion wrong my advice would be to go back and redo the vpc creator making that correct so probably using the default values if you can't do that because you've deleted the source or the source was provided to you etc um, you could go in here and type in a scale to put that back to the correct units just in case next tick box here is opacity um, you could call this x-ray uh, some people call this x-ray, so we can see we're looking through this building. Uh, this building is just under 300 million points. There's no performance hit. Um, so if that's important to you, great for doing animations and things. So you can see through the building and then go into the building, uh, etc. And then turn that off so it's back to solid. It's just a great feature. Um, here you can see where I changed the color to force color to so this is respected we can go actually go in here and actually change the RGB values um, why would I do this this can be useful if you have multiple scans uh, it's take, done over a couple of days or whatever and the weather changed it might have been a bright day one day dull day the next it means you could try and bring up the contrast and brightness and colors to make them look is if they were scanned together, just just makes the visuals look better again. You can color intens intensity if we're in, in intensity mode, uh, which can be useful for some people. And we also support classifications, two hundred and fifty six levels. And this point cloud doesn't have any, so it's just turning green. But they would be reflected here under this option. Other useful things in here, it tells you the name, um, how many points that that point cloud is, uh, see so just under 300 million, which version of the VPC creator was used to create it. Um, XYZ coordinates you can type in here. So I could type zero, zero, and zero, and you can see that point cloud is actually moving. It's moved to that coordinate system. If your point cloud was georeferenced, you could quickly see those large XYZ values uh, for the globe. Uh, we have lock position. So up here in another video, we have the position tool. This allows you to move the point cloud. Uh, so we're actually physically moving it, just not moving the camera. Um, if we lock this, you can see the position tool has been taken away. So just be mindful. If you don't see the position tool, that's uh, because it's been locked. Earth aligned, tick by default, never expect that to be taken off. That so uh, georeference data is aligned to the earth correctly. If your data has come in georeferenced and it may be incorrect, you can specify here an EPSG code for the selected point cloud. So then position it correctly uh, by typing in the correct value there. We have start and end time. So Arena 4D allows you to use a time controller. So you have point clouds turning off and on at certain times. A clip box, whether it's respected or not. Clip box is a separate video, but there's a tick box here. So always make sure that that's in the correct setting. So you'll also notice we have some features here, um, which are these, which basically how you're going to orientate yourself to that point cloud in a view. So um, you can see here this option here is looking at the bottom you can look at the top um, just looking at the shaded areas different sides it's just a very quick way to navigate around 